Okay, I'm recording this in the kitchen because my neighbor is mowing the lawn and it's very loud, so um, regardless. Uh, okay, so first thing you should know is that I love chases. So the fact that this episode is called The Chase got me really excited. And what I like that this episode captured, it's not a particularly story-driven one. It, it doesn't all tie together to the big story necessarily. What it captures, though, which I think is very important in any long ongoing conflict is the chaos of it because in chaos there's often confusion and in confusion there's surprisingly clarity because you forget sometimes what the conflict is and what you're fighting for and you are reminded that you're all part of the same species in a sense you should all be on the same side and I like in this episode, through all this chaos going on, through people splitting up and constant running through the night, they never get sleep and they start snapping at each other and they start splitting up and teaming up with other people they don't even know and coming across strangers and fighting duos and trios and whatever that wouldn't normally be hooked up together. They discover certain things about what they're really looking for in terms of who they will team up when the chips are stacked against them or when they need a friend or who their friends are, who will do what for who, who will not do what for who, and again, an episode like this I think is a very smart episode to have because you're actually learning a lot about the characters without necessarily going into their backstory, just seeing how they act to a very long chaotic situation can really demonstrate a lot. So you have this great setup where Azula and her posse are chasing after uh, you know Aang and his friends and they have some sort of new device that you know it's like a super fast tank pretty much and it can track them almost anywhere, and they don't know how. So obviously it seems like the Fire Nation is really upping their technology more and more, which is good, it makes the threat even stronger. So you have that going on, you have Toph, is it Toph or Tough? I forget. But um, you have her splitting from the group uh, for a bit because she's talking about how she's holding, she's carrying her own weight, what's the problem and Katara's having a problem because she should be contributing more to the team and be a team player and and I'll, I'll be honest that's not as much as you would think oh come on that's obvious I actually think there is a touch more going on there I've come across that situation sometimes too it, it's a legit situation so you know someone that just says hey I'm doing my own thing just let me do my own thing and then others are like look you, this is a team effort you have to be part of the team you have to help out we'll help you and so on and so forth so I, I thought that was actually a very legit uh, uh, sort of conflict going on there you have the uncle meets up with, with Toph and they don't know that they're going to be enemies essentially uh, they just run into each other they have no idea who they are they're just two strangers laws and they share tea together and they have a conversation. What I really like about this is that you could show them having the conversation and that could be enough. You would have your message out there that, hey look these people don't know who they are and yet they're getting along because they don't know who they are. That's the message. You know, this is the scene. You know this scene. And th this is what I think Man of Steel got wrong. I, oh, why am I being so mean to Man of Steel? I don't care. Um, Man of Steel would show these scenes because they know, hey, these scenes are in development movies. Uh, where, what does this mean? Well, I have to do this, and now the scene where I get beat up, and now the scene where I'm having trouble fitting in, and now the scene here. But it doesn't just stop there. It's not just showing that scene for the sake of showing that scene because this is part of the formula. What they talk about is important. They talk about what it means to not only help one another but to allow themselves to be helped. And I love at the end when she's leaving uh, she gives that bit of advice to him which I thought was very good advice that okay so you're following your nephew because you want him to know that he needs you and you're aware of it and that option should always be open. You could let him know that you need him as well. I thought that was very nice poignant writing. I, I thought that was very well done. Um, so again, it's not just this scene is here 
to be that scene, you know, just to get across this one message, is that they actually are sharing a conversation that's an important, good, strong conversation. So, it, like, it could stand on its own. If it didn't connect to the rest of the story, it would still be a good scene. So, kudos for that. And then at the end, you get this wonderful Mexican standoff. You, you get, uh, you get Aang, you got Zuko, and you got Azula. <clears throat> uh, and they have this three-way fight, and it's really great, but then they keep adding stuff on top. They have, uh, Katara catches up, and, um... Uh, and Sokka, and then you have the uncle catches up, and then you have Toph catches up, and this fight is going, and it, it just escalates and gets more and more crazy, and you're seeing who, it, in those moments, you're, they're just trying to think very quickly, okay, who, whose side am I on again? Wait, 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 wh wh which one am I fighting? Wait, that's Zuko, wait, that's Azula, okay, I'm fighting Azula, wait, who's Zuko fighting? Is he going after, hey, uh, no, he's going after Azula, too. okay, we're all after Azula, and it's, those moments are so great, because, like I said, you do get this surprising amount of, strange clarity in these very confused, chaotic moments. And even after when Azula does that, where she attacks the uncle, I hope he's not dead. I don't think he's dead. I don't think they would kill him off. Like, he'd have to have some last words or something. <laughs> I, I don't think they would kill him off right quite then. I think he's moaning too. But I, I love that Katara goes up and says, Zuko, I can help. And he says, get away! And it's like after that moment is over, they're back to their roles again. They're back to their sides. But, but they did sort of share each other. They, like all the outcasts came together, which I like. It's like for a second, they all shared that in common, that they had a common enemy. It's what my brother and I always call the alliance of convenience, where uh, my enemy is going to become my friend because he's also the enemy of my other enemy. And I love those scenes. I, I love when they have to give in and join the lesser of two evils. Um, so, ah! Phone's ringing, but I will answer it later, because I'm almost done here. Uh, so, again, a, a, a good episode, and I would very much argue an important episode. Uh, you, you see something called the chase, and you would just think, oh, it's just a chase. But so much is revealed about the characters in not necessarily showing their backstory or just talking, but just what they'll do under pressure. In fact, you could argue you can actually learn the most about a character in those moments. So I think this was a very strong, very important episode, and I love that it doesn't end with Zuko talking to his uncle, it doesn't end with Azula saying next time, it just ends with them sleeping. I thought that was a very good fast but also very effective way of ending it. It, it was so quick you, you could almost miss it, but it is just, the episode is so chaotic and so fast paced, you do just take a breath, you just go, Ooh, and you feel that breath. Uh, you feel that need to, you know, for, uh, for just relaxation, <laughs> just, just to stop. So, by a good way. So, a very, very good episode. I, uh, I enjoyed it immensely. So, that's it for this one. I'll see you at the next one.